Just by Sokol. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Gabriella Coleman, uh, anthropologist, just by the film. Um, Jay Lieberman asked to, uh, to join us to give sort of legal, give you, answer any kind of legal questions. And uh, of course, Joshua Coleman. Go. Anybody have questions? Anything? They have a mic. <laughs> okay. Do you guys know if you're being monitored by law enforcement now? Do you know if you're being yeah. monitored yeah. by law enforcement? Oh, right. I answered that question to you before. <laughs> How about after, the rest of you? After the indictment, when they were following me around, I used to take uh, floppy drives full of porn and throw them in trash cans and shout, they're trashing our rights! And then just walk away and like, watch them go to the trash can and like, all right! What's your phone calls and email? I haven't uh, experienced anything to answer your question, but I haven't. Um, I think Jay, you said that you've experienced some, uh, some. Yeah, I, I have. I have no doubt, and I, I, I won't go into the story again. But we, um, there was an incident that clearly proved. I, I'm, by the way, I'm Commander X's lawyer, and I'm Stanley Cohen was supposed to be sitting here, and he, he couldn't make it, so I'm, yeah, I'm, a, poor, I'm a poor excuse for Stanley. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very clear that they were at least monitoring my emails. I would be very surprised if they weren't monitoring my my phone calls, um, both before Commander X was apprehended, and I would be shocked now since he's a fugitive. Uh, he ran away to Canada, for those of you that, that don't know. Um, I can only assume it was that my legal representation was that bad. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I would be very surprised if they weren't monitoring in some form now, it would, it would make sense. Uh, any questions? There's a microphone now. Yeah. Before you got your stick. Okay. It's not on, where are the goons? <laughs> I can speak loudly. Is before. there a wizard in the house? Is there an on off switch here? We can hear you. We can hear you. Try again, try again. Try again. Oh, there you go. I'm curious how it has effectively changed your lives from beginning, so your younger years. I don't know if I'm not questioning your age here, but pre anonymous, pre revolution, let's just call it that, what, what have you seen change, good, bad, and different in your lives and the greater? I watch more porn now, and I don't have a job. Oh, and I'm indicted. <laughs> That's my open question. Trolling the FBI in person is really fun. I suggest it for everyone here. If you've not done it, it's a life experience you should have. I wouldn't mind actually taking your question and asking about Chris at the event, yeah. because you've been around uh, this scene for so long. And by the and, way, you're, uh, sitting, sorry to interrupt, you're sitting in the seat where I fed really Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it feels fantastic. I'm sure there's like herpes on the seat now. It's like white like, cute. <laughs> But uh, so, so Chris, you've been around for so for so long, and you've been a part of Loft, and of course Loft had some connection with the Cult of the Dead Cow, which we've talked about in the film and all of that. Um, how do you compare those early days to uh, things that have happened now recently? The kind of act, risk, renaissance of activity. We're seeing? Yeah, I think um, just early on, we were just sort of exploring what the power was that you know individuals could have when individuals got access to computers, right? So, you know, before the internet, you didn't have any access, so individuals had no power over corporations. The corporations and government and computers, they had all the power of information. And then once um, individuals got, got, got access that could write software or find holes or whatever, it was sort of the early years, sort of the mid, mid 90s to late 90s, when we started to say, well, you know, now that you know, we, we, we have some power, what do, we, what do we do with it? And I think the first thing really, um, the two things that came out of the cult of the dead cow early on, one was to, was back orifice, which was really to wake everyone up, that there was this gaping huge vulnerability in everyone's computer that was connected to the internet. And at the time, um, so they wrote it as, a, as an example, this is a wake up call. And of course the antiviruses company is like, you guys are evil, you guys are evil. And, um, Microsoft's response to it was, well, people just shouldn't run programs they don't understand, <laughs> right? And, uh, and of course now, if you look today, um, what is it, like 80% of the malware really is just Trojans, like 100,000 new ones each year. So nothing happened with that wake-up call. 
So that was one way that you know people were able to make a make a difference. But then um, after that, Cult of Dead Cow started to think about the censorship in China, and this was around I think around '99 when um, you know the Great Wall of China was was there, blocking Chinese citizens from seeing the rest of the world. And so that's where I really see that like hacktivism started start, started out with was trying to get rid of censorship with technology. So the governments and you know product companies were building things for governments using technology to censor individuals. And so the first real hacktivism was fighting back against that by building technology that could bypass it. And now you know it's evolved a lot more with Tor, but um, you know it started somewhere. It's, how do you, how do you compare those, um, the activity that Cult of the Cat did with the kinds of activity we see with the anonymous? How do you, how, how, well, you know, it really was a Mary Prankster organization. Um, you know, I, I said this, so, so it was like a duality. There was like, I think it was like nine members of Loft and four of them were in Cult of Dead Cow. I'm kind of an introverted guy. The more extroverted guys were in Cult of Dead Cow because they like to do the laws, right? And um, so that was always part of it. You know, everything was delivered. Back orifice was delivered. The hack to, to Vismo stuff that was breaking censorship was all delivered with like sort of an over the top propaganda. You know, called to think how it administer propaganda. And I think that's just part of this culture is to, to get attention. You have to use humor and you have to be just totally over the top and you know, say things that you can't even really do. Just to, just to get attention, because you're a small guy, like you're a few people or you know ten people. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Since you, since you all are talking about '99 and the CDC era, I wonder if you could speak to the role that attrition work played in that, because in, in early hacktivism, because there was is Brian here? Because there was in, you, in the old days before attrition work flipped to sort of a different model. It was almost being used as like uh, almost MySpace sort of posting via the basement is how it seemed. As so the, the, the early days of Attrition, one of the first product pro projects they had was to publicize the facements, right? Yeah. So to make people aware of the facements because a lot of the facements, unless you went to the site, you'd never know. And so they would do a screen capture and, and, and do it. And it, it actually, I don't know if it actually made more defacements happen because it was easier to, to, to get uh, out, out there, but it grew so big that they didn't have the manpower to track all the defacements, you know, just a small team, so they, they stopped doing it. But it, all, it almost seemed like there was a, like a dialogue going on in defacements with attrition work as the common, you know, you didn't have threads that much back then. And it almost, you'd see a defacement on attrition work and then somebody else, or maybe the same person under a different handle, I don't know, would do another defacement sort of in response, and it's all like greets and so and so. Does anybody know what attrition.org is? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, just because this went sort of back to the story, but it was, you know, I hated myself. No, no. That was, you know, obviously Brian was in the film. I actually have a question for him. Before.